Hello, is this thing on? Uh, that one. LBS still broke my... Uh, it still has this camera all broken. I don't know why. Like, here it is. It's plugged in, but, like, I turn it on and it crashes OBS, so it's just one camera. But it's fine. It's fine. I only need one camera. I don't need two cameras. I'm not a professional or anything. Hello, yes. Um, Eagle 7. E4 Goal 7. We're going to learn Morse code again, but this time there's more. Why can't I hear myself? There we go. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, today I was... Uh, hey, Graham. Cool. Um, good to see you. I think you've shown you were here before, but um, can't remember. But thanks for hanging out. So today, I was literally I was learning CW after work. I went to Web SDR, and I'm just puttering around. I go on to or no, I wasn't even on Web SDR. I was on a real actual ham radio. I was on a 7610 at the W0MA station. And oh, I didn't know there's Q100. Um, and I'll just kind of like simulate what I was doing. No, we don't want this one. I want 10 megahertz. Yeah, click. Um, anyway, I was puttering around with band scope and I was on 10 meters and I was just listening for slow stations that I could copy and I found one and I'm just like typing out what I can hear. And I like, I'm pretty reliably decoding it. It's at 20 words per minute, but about like a huge amount of space. So it was like five effective, which was really nice. Um, so I could basically pick it all up. And I got to his call sign, and it, when I heard it, like, my jaw just, just dropped. Like, so here I am, I'm 10 meters, just hanging out. Oh, here's the station. There's, like, no one on, or 10 meters, 30 meters. There's no one on here now except FD8. But I hear a station, and it's November Alpha 5 November. And this guy, Paul Harden, was somebody who I worked with at the Very Large Array. And, and if you know me, I um, talk about all the time when I worked at blocks, but a zero and five. When I worked at the Very Large Array, um, Paul Harden, NA5N, is the guy who designs the receivers for this thing that thing on the screen the VLA so let's see if I got a picture of me so here we go perfect those antennas I designed those stupid looking antennas uh, it's a sleeve dipole the same thing that's in a Wi-Fi um, thing Wi-Fi uh, antenna little short stubby antenna it's just for four, four meter bands so 70 megahertz uh, and these cables go up to the top and you can kind of, why am I pointing at the screen? You can kind of see this thing here. This, this is a, like a little raceway for the cables. And there was a four meter receiver in this dome. And this is a caster grain feed. So this whole dome rotates to point the, uh, point the, I don't got a good picture of it, do I? To point the signal into the feed horns, which are at the base. Here we go. Perfect. At the base of the, of the station. So that's all up here. There's also this other antenna that somebody else designed with a ballon, a cross dipole, uh, but but that's in the way of the feed, so they wanted something that wasn't going to interfere with uh, other um, other science. Like so, if they wanted to do S band or something, that antenna would get in the way. But this one is on the out outer rim, so the wave pattern goes. Why am I pointing at the screen? It's hard to like do this. The wave the wave comes in, hits the dish, bounces up, bounces off of this thing, and gets fed into the feed horn here the wave comes in bounces up and you get a little bit of gain so like probably like normally you get 60 you know 30 something db of gain this would probably give you with this dish uh i would want to say about 10 db of gain um and it's circularly polarized in either left or right circular polarization so but like lo and behold it's freaking paul harden who who uh, does this so i email him i said was that really you uh and and he email me back says yep i was there 10 uh points three something five uh mega what was it let me see uh NA5N. <laughs> that was him and he was running his 10 tech scout on the air had to replace up he, he's an he's an amazing operator and amazing uh um he wrote the book on qrp he retired three years ago. Wow. And um, 
yeah it's just a small world like imagine the 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 chances of just like scrolling the band and then all of a sudden there's this guy you know like it's it was crazy and that's more scope for you um anyway that's the story that there's a book that he wrote uh, actually amazon.com if i type in his name hopefully there's nothing bad on uh uh <laughs> on my i was gonna say hope there's nothing bad on my amazon but then i just go into john coltrane lovers after oh that's Wait, PG-13? What? I don't understand. Anyway. Um, here's, here's one thing he wrote. The Handyman's Guide to Homebrew Construction Practices. It's a really good thing. Get a really good read. How to do, like, Manhattan, dead bug style. Uh, this is Manhattan style to do all this stuff and he drew he's this is his drawings too so it's very impressive very ugly um so yeah uh and actually funny fun fact about this one day so you notice how these are stowed up in the upright position these aren't these are actually taking data but if you're on it they are upright these are taking data so they're actually in use but here up in the corner they're all pointed up that means they're stowed or they're parked and that's when you can go up and uh, and do work on them like right here there was one day that they were replacing some of the power transformers out out yonder like these these boxes right here they were doing some uh, replacements of those and that means the whole site has to be down for the almost the entire day and it just so happened the moon was at zenith like directly up and so they these well almost directly up and i'll get to that in a minute these antennas were almost pointed straight up or they were pointing straight up and the moon was just barely off and i'm like is there any way i can plug in my 817 and get them to rotate the antenna just like two degrees like one of these antennas two degrees so that it's like right at the moon and they're like oh yeah i think we do that you're just gonna have to unplug all of the receivers and turn them off and it's like wait that's gonna take like four days to bring it back up online because they're using helium to cool the receivers like to negative 14 or 14 kelvin which is negative 250 something degrees celsius which is really cold um so we ended up not doing that but i came really really close to like doing earth moon earth with the vla dish which these don't transmit they receive only and and if you did transmit it would blow things up so that's why i said you have to remove them um but this close so yeah i worked there this is my picture that i took from from one of the dishes that was in maintenance mode like you see point at the screen again you see this one here these these bunch are all pointed up uh towards the sun it looks like they're getting calibrated or maybe not sun is whatever um but this one is pointed straight up and the one i'm on is pointing straight up because they're undergoing maintenance so yeah check out this n0scc.blogspot.com this guy was my boss he was basically this was basically my job to run around and look for people with phones this was another rfi detecting system that a dish I could turn and program and, and do stuff with a TV antenna. Um, and this is where I actually tried to learn CW for the first time because my commute was literally like from Socorro to this place, which is like an hour drive to your large array. 54 minutes, so this was my drive or really my bus ride and so if i was on the bus i would actually have an app and I would, I would learn morse code and so that's probably why this morse code thing has been kind of easy for me to like get a hold of um but now i'm finally like really battening down and doing it for, for real this time and yeah um this is the uh these dishes are what the simulate oh i need to fix this um james burke dish um these dishes are what was model what is modeled in in uh, the simulator uh, signal simulator or something like that, in which is a video game you can get on Steam. So, man, I miss this place. I mean, I w I would love to work there if it just wasn't in the middle of nowhere. And and Justin would love it too if we could just like enjoy. No. <laughs> 
but like actually from space you can see here's a dish that is stowed straight up and there's probably somebody on it or it's not working like a thing is it is uh, broken in it here's another um there's what there's this thing out in the front if you ever go there this this solar uh you can actually look at it. it's a solar telescope you can actually point at the sun and a little meter will will vibrate and one of my uh coworkers, another intern uh designed that circuit and i helped them out um and you go all the way back to Socorro. There's so much soda stuff, like someone's on the air, so much APRS. It was so much fun. Socorro is 10% hams. Like the population of Socorro is 10% licensed. But then you have the actual headquarters of uh, the VLA up at New Mexico Tech, which is right here, the Array Operations Center. And that's where Paul Harden worked most of the time. So that's my story. Um, another thing I was going to talk about is my new episode, episode, my new edition of QST, make your own open wire line. I'm not advertising this, but like, I really want to do this. Um, but I don't want to do it the way this guy has written it out. If I can find the page, if I can find the page 30, 30. So like he uses these these plastic. Uh, let's go to a better camera. Let's go to the camera too, Tommy. He uses these plastic insulators, but I don't know how. Like I didn't read the whole article. But I don't know where he gets them or like if he makes them. Three oh he uses three three eighths inch thick sheets of black polyethylene and he actually routes them or um, miters them or whatever, um, mills them out, cuts them out, uses a standard wood cutting blade. What I want to do is make my life easy and just buy it from soda beams soda beams has a, a very handy open wire line doobly do that you can buy and and antenna too antenna wire too where's there's products at product product store 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 products antennas supports hardware there we go Towers, drive on stand. I want to buy that. It's a bummer that this guy is in the UK because all the shipping for, for this stuff is kind of expensive from the UK if it's not something small. We need a guy in, in America to do to do this stuff. But like their antennas isn't, isn't a big deal. Are these like guying rings for uh, push up poles? Where's the dang old. No, this is not the page. Antenna accessories and hardware? Ah, uh, this is it. Open wire line spacers pack of 10 for five bucks. So it's like a little uh, little piece of plastic. It's 3D printed that your wire can, can kind of squeeze into. And there's that and there's also another one. He also has antenna wire for 100 meters for 10 bucks, which is like, dang, that's not bad. If you watch uh, Callum, um, DX engineering guy, he, he has a really good source of antenna wire. Here's another one that's long, and it's a pack of five, and the, the, uh, they're injection, injection molded, um, and the wire kind of slips in between those two forks and then over the, over the top one, kind of like that. Um, so yeah, I wanna do that. But also I just wanted to shout out to QSD for making like really good art lately like most of this is normal but when i flipped to this page like i was kind of impressed i need like a stream button i was kind of impressed like this looks like a like make magazine or something r.i.p like it's art it's colors it's it's functional it's pretty it's it's just very cute to look at my cats on the two chairs we bought for them um, what would you do without them in the stream? I know. Sometimes people notice them and they're like, oh, I'm, OMG, this is why I'm here. <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> is there a monitor for these? Uh, it's on the banister. Downstairs. Uh. 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 So, yeah, I don't know. The QSD, I still love the articles. A lot of people are like, ah, it's just a rag full of, full of advertisements. But it's like, well, that's funding. But... Um, no, you can chat here, Graham. And have I tried what with my CW key? Uh, chat on Twitch. I mean, it all goes on 
on my stream here anyway. Um, I would prefer people to go to Twitch because I want more hams on Twitch because Twitch is the bomb. YouTube sucks. Twitch rocks. But Twitch doesn't like have let me keep like a long train of videos. Um, but I can all see it from here. Like this is what it looks like to me. Hello. This is behind the scenes. And this is what happens. No, I'm not going to click it. It's going to crash OBS. Um, also, this is behind the scenes of me trying to edit a video. Not editing a video. It's just all kind of adjusted. I had to convert these to proxy files so they would be editable. I could do a stream of just editing a video. We could start off. My idea for this video is I go, um, I uh, pick some of my old videos, like like this one. Wait, that's not the right one. Why am I not the video? Oh, geez, what's happening? For crying out loud, I messed up. Okay. I pick a single video, like my K8RA video. Hey, and Zero SSD here. Today's a wonderful. <laughs> and then I do like a little montage, and I pick this one and that one. My first unassisted QSO, but like making videos is hard, and I can just like click play and go, which is what we're doing right now. Um. 1,000 here for the judges, which Charlie left to go. Uh, Charlie was the orange one. He always leaves to follow Justin around, my wife. Um, has, is there any good way to connect a CW key to PC to practice with decoder? Yes. I'll show you that right now. CWCOM. And um, I'll show you how to get it. You go to m Morse Power dot blogspot dot com. It, I'm sorry for the web design. It's not my website, but it is um, a very effective website. It, it's designed by a retired uh, fellow from uh, the Royal Navy, who actually has been emailing me back and forth. He was—he's this guy isn't a ham, which is surprising, but he is very, very fun about uh, with um, you TV coffee. There you go. Um, he he uh, he he has his blog and he you know tells people how to use CWCOM and it's an it's a thing to get online with it's like Echolink but for Morse code kind of it's more like Hamsphere but with Morse code but there's no paying for it it's all free it, it might be a challenge to install but uh, oh nice now you're on Twitch uh, might be a pain to install because it's this is built for Windows ninety five. But it works for me. Like I, I followed his instructions. It's just you know installing a regular program, and what I've done, comport, close. Oh yeah. So what I have here is this is a going on with me. Okay, this is a uh, USB to serial converter. So it's just literally serial port, and it's connected to. Uh, a piece of wire that connects to my Morse code paddle and there's a there's a and then the USB serial just plugs in comes up as COM3 I had to install the drivers and whatnot obviously what, what? things are weird things are happening all of a sudden Ugh, Siri is talking to me um, and those instructions are keying connecting with a Morse key so they're right here just like that USB serial converter Here's the pinout here. Follow that pinout, works flawlessly. I actually just kind of shoved them into a gender changer and taped it together with, with scotch tape, like, cause I had nothing better at my desk. That is literally scotch tape. And so now I can send question marks for days. If I had my second camera, that'd be optimum but I don't, and this camera's just gonna fall. For crying out loud, cooperate. <sighs> so I have that all connected, and the settings, com port, make sure, like we learned last time, dit memory is turned on, because that lets me kind of pinch, and put some contrast up. Don't fall. If you see, I don't know if the turn on some extra lighting. Uh, it's a 
increase the frame rate. If you kind of see how I kind of pinch it, that's the way you send like an in, if you will. Um, I can also use manual to straight keyify it. So basically, this becomes a straight key. How do I spell my name? And then that decodes what you're actually sending on on this like little thing. So it can help you send. Let me switch back to iambic and send something. Wait, how do I spell it, spell it again? <laughs> the transmit lot reset oh yeah the I don't know why some of the settings just randomly change but I noticed that the dip was longer than a DAW so this should be more spaced correctly see you Graham thanks for hanging out what am I doing oh for crying out loud it turned off dip memory no it didn't <laughs> it felt like it did Reset lock. Okay, now I found the next problem with CWCOM. If you send a Q, I send it like da 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 da. I, I hold down the, the da and then I hit dit and just right in between it. So. And CWCOM is is annoying like that so i'm i'm getting used to it though i'm gonna have a uh, actually have this thing which is my uh paddle keyer um which i can plug into a straight key and it'll it'll give me keying but i also have a wind keyer coming which is usb so i can plug that into my computer and use wind keyer but that's a 50 dollar device for the mini um this is is free besides the the serial port thing um, also, this Morse key is so frippin' heavy. I love it. Ugh! Bong! Okay. So, Graham, you're leaving just in time for me to actually learn Morse code. The boring part of this stream is, is the thing where we, you know, do Morse code, which is the whole point of me doing this whole thing. I, and this is where I'm still, like, looking out for people, and I'm surprised my, uh, my regulars aren't in here. Um, telling me what to do. <laughs> um, Mr. Hernandez, I miss your 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 thing, your thing. DuckDuckGo user, I see you on that Brave Bowser hype train. I don't actually use Brave. I use it for a minute, and then I got tired of it. I just use Firefox. I thought Brave would be cool because I could go to websites and get, get paid for it, but I just like DuckDuckGo um, because Google has, like, lost its some of its shine like it's the search algorithm has gotten worse while well, DuckDuckGo gives me 90 percent of things all i want like sometimes i'm just searching for i don't know pico paddle and sure i know the website but like literally boop there it is uh that's all i need um or morse power website like i just type in morse power and then it's the first thing like i'm not if i if i'm doing hardcore googling i i will do um, resonance, uh, cascade, cascadence of high volume negative in, uh, impedance. Let me actually do something that's legitimate. Something I was Googling today was negative impedance, impedance converter. And I'd go G exclamation point, G bang, and then it gives me some more f useful links than, than DuckDuckGo might. Although, I mean, 
for this one in particularly, it's all the same thing. Um, but yeah, I've been looking up this thing called a negative end penis converter for matching electrically small antennas. Uh, for example, the mini whip. P A, wait, the HF mini whip. Let me bet. I'll bet you. There it is. No, wait, that's not it. Oh, yeah, it is. P A 0 RDT mini whip. That's what I need to learn or need to know. And then I just go and type and I Googled it. Boop. Anyway, what am I doing? So, yeah, for coding, definitely. Um, definitely using Google is, is your best bet because it, it can search. It does a better job searching like Stack Overflow and, and, and it does a better job of like knowing you are looking for coding answers. And DuckDuckGo is like, you want to buy what on Amazon? I don't know about that. <laughs> so... I, I've been like reckon I've been like waffling if I should ask some Elmers like what might be the best way to learn Morse code but the majority the, the most I've been being I've been told is you should just like get on the air and so that's why I'm like okay I'll get on somebody's air and uh, and learn Morse code <laughs> on uh, web SDR because here I can tune in a real station green SDR. Uh, 20 meters sounds good. Actually, it might be a little like 20 meters. Let's go 40. 40, 40, 40 CW. L. O. S. Now that's my kind of speed. Bring up notepad again and he messed up. My name. Oh, he said name twice. That's what I was like. I was waiting for his name. Tim. I think Tim is learning Morse code too. How copy? I'm filling in the blank. I didn't get that. What is da 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 no no six uh what was the last part of his call sign N N six dang I wanted to look him up this guy's so down in the noise I can't understand him I'll keep an eye on it and come back to him whenever he comes back. Radio Oklahoma, um, call signs are not terribly hard if they're being sent very slow. It's just like how we learned through the Coke Method CW course, like just random letters and numbers. That trained me really well for call signs. So like if I mute this guy with the mute button, that is not to be found anywhere, mute. Volume. Wait, I'm gonna make this like that. Oh, that's better. Oh, it's over here. Um. Oh, he's back. Hang on a second. On that note, I want to see what his call sign is. He's just repeating his name. Maybe they can't hear each other hardly at all. Hmm. 
There must be a lot of new operators on or something, or, or not new, but just, you know, very slow, uh, slow words per minute. QRS. QRS meaning code is slow. Oh, CQ. 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 KC six L E N. Call signs, yeah, are are kind of like kind of challenging because, but also at the same time they're pretty pretty easy because you kind of expect some things like, you know, it's going to start with a A K N W for for local stations. You know, there's going to be a number, and then after that number is going to be one, two, or three characters. So you kind of prep yourself, and normally they send it more than once, um, unless it's call a uh, contest. Um, so anyway, like, if I go through and do some call sign training, like, it's probably not too bad at this word speed. Okay, wait, wait, no! <laughs> speed, five words per minute. Minimum character speed, 22. Maximum speed, 25. 20, 25. 28. So at a slow speed, it's not terrible. I hate this stupid thing. Give me, give me the standard tone. This speed isn't bad. Because it's just about the same speed we've been learning it. I didn't get the last one. Um, and so some of these slow speed operators at the top end of the band, the CW portion, are about that same speed, which I like. So I can just put around and like listen to actual people conversations and then run into random people that I know from a previous job. Like how, how rare is that? Sorry, I, I'm getting excited. I wish people watch my, more people watch my stupidity here on YouTube. This is straight key. Well, there's some, there's two stations. I'm just gonna look up this station. Oh. Rob Schneider. There's a broken link. Nice. Sorry I'm doxing everyone, but that's just ham radio. Of course, it's not Reddit. If this was Reddit, it would be against the rules, but partially why I got a P.O. box, but it doesn't stop anybody from being able to find your home, your address. Let's try here. Oh, this was the guy from before, so then like really slow. November, November 6, I think it's da 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 da, right? Yeah, 6. Tim, Tim Kearns. Why is that familiar? Been in ham radio for 50 years. Operate mostly 40 meter CW. Should I get a four by four character call sign? This will be fun. This is straight keying, but with a really like sloppy, um, like if I uh, emulated it on CW com. So a good, a good CW keying sounds like ish, because it's CW com and it's like it's rough. But a lot of people, especially with bugs, not just straight keys, 
but also bugs, which are kind of weighted things that like instead of doing this for dits, it like you hold down a thing and this weight goes do 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 like like a flopper. And um so good weighted C W sounds like to the best of my ability. And then a lot of, I, I hear a lot of people who, who really string along these dits where they, they don't put enough spacing. Um, for whatever reason, it might be just how they learn CW. And those are really hard to decode if you've been learning perfect CW, you know, if you've been always learning, you know, I really need to work on my B. If you haven't figured that out, I'm literally just sitting in the alphabet. I just suddenly decided that was a good thing to do, like a nice drill. Ooh, this is hard. E, E, I, H, five. E, I, S, H, five. E, I, S, H, five. Do that straight. Nice. <laughs> and then what's the T version? T, M, O, uh, and then zero because four uh four dashes is nothing. I think it might be Shrillic, perhaps, or or a Chinese or Japanese character, but it goes T M O zero. Not not as hard as as the fives. Tried to send Paris, but I mush it up too much. So, okay, I mute this and start decoding some more. I'm gonna try to decode this straight key, even though it's kind of rough. And it's kind of fast for me too. Did not catch any of that. Did anybody else catch that? And just look for a second. Like this is this is a lot of CW stations on the air right now. It's just an evening in um, Saturday. Saturday. What the frick? It's Tuesday evening, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 stations. Just hanging out. I mean, sure, yeah, there's hundreds more FTA stations, but like, CW is not a dead language by any means. Like, there's people on it, and if you just start calling CQ right there, somebody's gonna show up. I'm not gonna call CW because I'm gonna get embarrassed, and then people are gonna be like, you should, you're going, learn, you're learning that way, but yeah, you know. Um, now what should I do? It's been 41 minutes and I haven't really done much CW learning. I don't know. I need to know what actually will improve my skills. And I asked my friend Marty in N1C and he says he learned using Morse Runner. Why is Morse Runner not installed? I do not believe for a second I haven't installed Morse Runner at one point. But my computer just decides to delete programs sometimes. 
Oh, that's weird. Twitch wasn't letting you send. Let me see if Twitch is doing something weird. Streaming video to your dashboard. You're live, man. Stream. Welcome to the chat room. Sorry for nobody in the chat room. Chat settings. Followers only. Moderations. Caught by auto mod. Chime skinny. I don't know. I also don't see a backlog, so that's weird. <sighs> well, I guess YouTube is the winner there. Morse Runner. Freeware. Gr yeah, I have definitely downloaded this. Why does it not think I have? Or at least I've used it. Downloads. Morse Runner, Morse Runner, Morse Runner, Morse Runner. Latest version. Okay. Open. Set up. Do -do -do. Okay. Launch Morse Runner. Okay. Station. Names OSSC. 20 words per minute. Turn off all of these noise. Two activity. So Morse Runner is a program for people to get really fast at catching contest exchanges. Right? So if I just case if you catch bandwidth during village activities adjacent to see operator. I want to know if there's a way to slow it down. <laughs> CW speed, CW pitch, CW bandwidth, monitor level, I don't know. Let me give it a run for two minutes. You'll kind of get the idea real quick here. So I type F1 to call CQ. just happened oh my god my brain hurts um check nil what does that mean i must have messed it up um so this is a contest it's a contest contained entirely within your computer and uh you type in your call sign qsk is is um either full break-in or not full break-in semi-break-in where you can hear stations between each of your characters that you send um, you can add all kinds of noise, flutter. Actually, you can add lids, like problematic operators, increase the activity level. And what you're, what you're getting when you call hit F1, call CQ, is a bunch of operators coming back like in a pileup. And you have to work them by decoding them and using this set of macros to send their, their, their information back to them. So let me do that one more time. CQ again. Oh, and real 
quick so you can hear the static between the dits and daws like that's what QSK is if I turn it off the static goes away so all you hear is me and I kind of like the QSK on the fill break in Now it sends DL and I want to be able to send um, 7P is really smart like it's it's really actually fascinating um let me pause it for a second so i typed in lu1 and question mark r because i didn't get the f and z and the guy sent back the the computer sent back lu1 fcr fcr like lu1 fcr he sent his call sign twice and i was like okay cool so i filled in the question mark and I actually sent the question mark to tell the guy I didn't get that, but it also sent his number, which is his, the exchange in the call sign. So I filled it in and I hit enter and then it sent his call sign back to tell him that I received it correctly, which I wouldn't have expected that. Like, I don't think N1MM does that actually natively. That's kind of cool. All right, that's been 50 minutes. So I think we've, we've had enough fun for tonight. There's also roof, S roof F D X P, which is similar but different. I don't like this. This one was hard. Um, yes, these are both free. Roofs X P is. Shut up is uh literally just sends call signs i guess that you that you continually get in and but they're both free if you just google RF zxp and come on and morse runner like you just saw i went to the dxitlist.com site clicked it got it easy um all of the stuff so far I've used is free, except for a uh, USB to serial converter <laughs> and the Morse code key. But I mean, you can literally use like all things considered, like you can literally just take two pieces of wire and connect them together. And that's literally a Morse code key. A straight key, um, you would have to get a, be a little bit more elaborate and maybe get a, um, uh, what are these things called? There's one in my office somewhere. Somewhere. Nope. Binder clip. Use make one out of paper clips and, and office supplies. I've seen that done before. Like cheap cheap Morse code key. Oh, let's see. 
Um, these are not cheap Morse code keys. That's a homemade one, but not cheap. This one I have, this one. We put together this, and it is pretty cheap. I think $50, $56 for this little guy and I made a video putting that together uh, I think that's the cheapest paddle that you can buy but then like these homebrew ones like this is two guitar picks and some spring steel um, homebrew iambic paddle how about that Come on, give me some ghetto ones. Not these, like, perfectly looking ones. Jeez. Yeah, this is this is a, a side swiper, so it looks really nice, though. I mean, it's pretty fancy. Um, this one's made out of circuit board material. Let me do this. Paper clip. Paper clip I am big paddle. No. Let me do this. Banana Morse code key. All right. Google to the rescue. Perfect. I'll leave you with this note. I have no idea what was sent, but he literally sent that on two bananas and a piece of copper on the inside. All right. Doing some filming in, out in the uh, open area. It looks like and, you uh, know, when my... W5KUB is live streaming, so go check them out. Um, oh, it also looks like it's N0SSC is live streaming, watching W5KUB live stream. How about that? Oh, it looks like N0SSC is watching n 0 <laughs> It's going into Awesome. All right. 73, everyone. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Um, maybe we'll learn Morse code <laughs> at some point. Bye. How do I turn this thing off? Ah! <laughs> it's just so funny. Uh, I love I love streaming. <laughs>